Good evening, everybody. My name is Jonathan. Welcome to Jonathan Explos. It's been uh, one and a half month since I owned this Suzuki Eco. I've driven it uh, 1,920 kilometers, so I thought it'll be a good time to share my experience of owning this vehicle with you guys. The variant which I've selected is a five-seater AC variant. Uh, it's not CNG, it's, it's petrol. The reason why I've uh, selected this variant is uh, because I wanted extra space at the back. I didn't want either CNG tank or uh, extra row of seats at the back because I want to eventually convert it into a camper van. The Suzuki Eco comes in few different variants. You have a 7-seater without AC, 5-seater with AC, 5-seater CNG with AC. These are the three options that I know about. The color options are black, white, gray, silver, blue and red. The reason why I've selected this grey colour is because I wanted a very stealthy look for my car. I do a lot of uh, camping in the jungle and all that. I didn't want it to stick out. You know, I didn't want uh, it to be noticed. Eventually, I want to do a, like a PPF coating on this. Right now, it's a very reflective grey. I want to make it a matte grey. That's a project for some other time. Before that, I have other projects I want to do on the car. I want to modify a lot of things before that. Now, let's talk about the exterior of this car. As you can see, the car has a very boxy shape, which means there's plenty of room on the inside. You know, usually cars, you know, the, the sides of the car usually come in like this way. That reduces the space a lot. This car doesn't have that problem. Since it's a boxy shape, cruising on the highway at very high speeds, the car is always trying to fight the wind. Like, you know, it's not cutting through the wind. It's always fighting the wind and you have to make a lot of adjustments on the wheel. If you're going like 100 plus, Till around 80, 90, it's fine. The moment you cross 100, only then it becomes problematic. Now let's talk about the uh, headlights. Actually, let's talk about all the lights. There are no uh, LEDs or anything. It's all halogen based. As you can see, very simple, plain, old school technology, nothing new and nothing modern about the lights. They do the job. I'll say the brightness is, it's average, I would say. It's not very bright. I've seen, uh, I've, I've driven cars with brighter headlights, it's, but it's not dim either, it's not too bright, it's like very average. And as you can see here, there's a cutout for uh, fog lamps. So in no variant do you get fog lamps with this car, you have to attach the fog lamps as an accessory. So the provision is given for that. It doesn't have a body colour bumper, it has a, like this black plastic bumper, which I think is excellent for city use. For instance, if somebody knocks you on the side, or scrapes their bumper onto yours, you won't see any scratches, you know. It will just be scuffed up a bit, you can polish it out, you know. Moving on to the side of the car. Uh, in none of the variants, you get any uh, alloy wheels or anything. You have to either do it after market or as an accessory. You get uh, standard uh, steel rims and 13-inch uh, tyre, as you can see. Very basic stuff, small tyre. This footstep I have attached by a brand called Ajanta. It's a uh, aluminum footstep and uh, so far so good, not had any problems with it, it's doing the job. Now moving on to the back of the car, same standard uh, halogen tail lamp, indicator, reverse lights, reverse lights on both the sides, not just one side, which is good. I've seen a lot of uh, cars which have reverse lights only on one side. Standard black plastic bumper, eco badging, Suzuki badging. And uh, that's about it with the exterior of this car. It's a very practical car, it's a very basic car. In the looks department, I won't give it a 10 on 10 or anything, but uh, it's more practical, you know, than uh, more priority is given to the practical aspect of it than to the design. It's a very basic design. It's a utilitarian design, I would say. So guys, I want to uh, tell you about the doors of this car. The back door opens like this. It provides us with nice shelter for when we are cooking or doing some work. And uh, I want to show you the sliding doors. So the rear doors are sliding on both sides. Both sides are sliding so you can, you can walk through and through the car. This is a very useful feature because while we are doing some work or cooking or anything, we can keep these doors open and quickly access stuff from inside of the car. Talking about the ORVMs, they're very uh, standard and basic ORVMs. It's not automatic, it's just totally manual. If you have to adjust them, 
you have to put down the glass adjust them and roll the glass back up one of my concerns was before i bought this car is that when i parallel park i like to put this mirror down so i can see the back wheel so i was concerned that every time i have to parallel park i'll have to roll down this window adjust this mirror and then park the car but uh, that's not the case because of the size of the mirror as you can see it's a very long mirror it's not that wide but it's very long so i have adjusted this mirror in such a way that uh, i can permanently see the back wheel and the back of the car and also i can see vehicles uh, overtaking me from the left hand side turns out that it's not actually a disadvantage you just have to adjust this mirror properly guys now let's take a look uh, inside the bonnet let me show you what's under the hood so as you can see there is no engine over here the engine is uh, beneath the driver and co driver seat under the hood uh, you can see uh, this is the coolant this is the brake fluid and the jack is here radiator and uh, ac compressors down there uh, windshield uh, washer liquid this is the wiper motor and this is the abs unit that's it there's nothing much in here let me talk to you about the steering wheel this is a very basic steering wheel it is not power steering it's not electronic power steering it's not hydraulic power steering it's just a manual steering wheel that's the one thing i don't like about this car i mean if the company charged me 40 50000 more for the power steering i would willingly pay and install that but unfortunately whichever variant you buy of this car you're not going to get a power steering also one more thing what i don't like about the car is that the wiper setting it just has low and high it doesn't have that setting where it you know wipes one time and then it waits for few seconds and then it goes again it doesn't have that setting which i miss which i like in fact that means that uh, i'm going to have to change my blades more often because the wiper is going to be running constantly guys i forgot to mention that this car doesn't come with a music system if you want a music system you'll have to attach one from the aftermarket or you'll have to add it as an accessory from the showroom itself and it does come with these uh, speaker grills where you can attach two 4 inch speakers on either side that side has one as well as you can see this car comes with a very basic dashboard it's got two trip meters odometer fuel gauge and the speed very simple and very basic let me now tell you about the seats of this car uh, the driver and uh, co driver seats are quite comfortable only when you're sitting on it if you want to recline it back it has this uh, weird uh, weird shape over here which makes it quite uncomfortable to like recline and sit it's way more comfortable if you sit upright than to recline so that's one quirk of this car i thought you guys should know and uh, speaking about the back seats the back seats are perfectly fine there is enough leg room at the back there is enough thigh support it's all good while the driver seat the recline angle can change it can also move back and forward so if you're a taller person you can move it back if you're shorter you can move it forward unlike the co driver seat which uh, does not move back and forward it's just fixed uh, speaking of the headroom in this car uh, there's plenty of headroom as you can see uh, my height is uh, 511 it's good enough for me and even sitting in the back seat there's plenty of headroom and plenty of legroom i mean the legroom is like you like a king sitting at the back no problems at all after driving this car for around 2000 kilometers i have noticed one thing about the accelerator pedal the wheel arch is quite close to the accelerator pedal there's not much a gap between the accelerator pedal and the wheel arch so if you're wearing any pointed toe shoe or even if you're wearing floaters which are a little large it's going to keep rubbing against the wheel arch so it's not very comfortable while driving that i wish i wish there was more place on the uh, around the accelerator for my foot because i have very big feet my foot size is above the average indian foot size so which is why i, I probably am one of the few people who have this problem guys something that i should mention about this car is that it doesn't have enough storage 
uh, as in uh, cup holders and bottle holders and like the door storage and nothing absolutely nothing in this car so what will end up happening is that if you have any bottles or anything you will end up keeping it either on the ground or on the seat which uh, sadly i i wish suzuki fixed this in the last update but unfortunately they didn't let's uh, go for a spin and i'll tell you more about the engine and the performance let me tell you something about the engine uh, this car has a 1.2 liter four cylinder engine and it produces around uh, 79 or 80 brake horsepower and uh, more than 100 newton meters of torque this car shares the same engine with the swift and the swift desire so the engine is quite capable only thing it's tuned differently it's tuned for mileage and it's tuned to carry load rather than tuned for pickup and speed so you will notice that difference as soon as you start driving this car because the gear shifting is quite is, is a bit more frequent and the gears are quite uh, tight together as compared to uh, other cars with the same engine safety features this car has uh, two airbags in front for the driver and co-passenger it has abs and also ebd so safety features this car has come a long way the previous model didn't have too many safety features but now uh, this model has got quite a number of safety features maruti could do better by giving even more safety features but uh, hopefully the newer versions of this car will have even more safety features than the current one uh, speaking of the ride quality it's not a very comfortable uh, ride quality it's fine it's not too bad either it's not that good i'll say they've given a very uh, stiff suspension setup in the front the back shocks are very comfortable the front suspension is a bit uh, stiff but i can understand why they've done that is so that there will be less body roll so that's understandable safety wise it makes sense making the suspension a little stiff in the front although i do wish it was a bit softer in front the ride quality does get better when the car is fully loaded especially when the boot is filled somehow the front suspension also becomes quite soft and uh, it gets quite comfortable guys one thing i noticed about the car is that when you blow the horn it feels like the horn is facing you instead of facing the people in front of you so i'll blow the horn and show you it's quite loud inside the cabin sound isolation is not much i'll say you can hear all the road sounds and the stones hitting the chassis and you'll hear all the bumps and everything in this car this car has a fuel capacity of 32 liters which i feel is a little small Uh, I think they should have given a little a bigger tank at least 39 40 liters would have been better. At the end of the day this car fulfills all my needs and requirements. Yes there could have been certain improvements done to the car for example adding a power steering increasing the number of safety features all that could have been done and hopefully it will be done in the future updates of this car. I hope uh, I've been able to express my thoughts about this car in a meaningful way to you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on our next adventure. See ya. Bye.